Hey YouTube friends, this is Homeschooling with a Smile. In today's video, I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison and review of the Saxton Math 1 and the Horizons Math 1 for first grade. This is our end of school year review for math. Um, we did use both of these programs quite a bit and I wanted to do a review and just give my opinion on what I thought of both of these programs. If you saw my beginning of the school year video, I think about nine months ago, um, I did show the Saxton Math and Manipulatives Kit, I believe. So I won't go too in-depth um, with Saxton in terms of flipping through the book, because I think I've already done that. But I'll do a little bit more with Horizons because that was something new that we added and I didn't do a video on it. So just a little background. Um, when we started our first grade homeschool year, um, we went with the um, Saxon math just because it was something that we were kind of um, almost like pushed towards coming from the public school system in our district and um, it's in the common core standards and things like that. So I didn't know as much as I know now about my choices in terms of schooling and so um, I kind of went with it, but I always had my eye on Horizons, and I did want to try it. And so um, a few weeks in to the school year, I decided we need to needed to do um, Horizons as well, and just to get a really full understanding of what we needed to accomplish for math. But anyway, I'm going to start here with Horizons. So for Horizons, you get the teacher's um, guide and the book one and book two. So for book one, we completely finished that, so I don't have anything to show you for book one. Um, so book two here for the student, we left off on, let's see here, I believe it's lesson 80. Yep, so we left off on lesson 80. So this is just lesson 81. We are going to continue with this program um, into the summer because I really want to finish it. Um, we just didn't have the time to do it this year. And because of how much we got done in Saxton um, and this many lessons into Horizon, we really finished a full school year of math. And so um, we're just going to finish this through the summer because I really do want my daughter to complete um, a full first grade math program. So here you look inside. Um, Horizons is very colorful. The student work pages are very engaging and full of color. Um, there's a little bit of everything. And there's not too much of anything. And that's what we seem to really like about it. Um, so this is considered a spiral program, just like Saxton is. So with the spiral um, programs, um, it's really an incremental learning, which basically is um, giving the child time to understand and practice a small portion of a concept um, before adding in the next steps. And um, it really helps to reinforce the foundational skills and fluency for problem solving. And there's just steady progress all through. And um, we've really enjoyed it. You learn a lot and um, it's pretty simple, it's engaging. Um, I feel like this is um, advanced in some ways just because the concepts that are taught, um, I find are, are like advanced more so than Saxton. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute, why I think that. But as you can see, lots of color, very engaging. My daughter loved um, the color and just how every section is different. And it's there's not too many problems. It is two-sided, each lesson. They also have tests throughout. So I wanna show you the teacher's guide. So inside the teacher's guide, I just flipped to um, a random lesson. For example, lesson 20 here, it tells you the concepts and the objectives of the lesson some teaching tips, the materials you're going to need, and then the activities you're going to do. For this one, there's a test 
Um, there's also um, activity pages for the child to do. In the back of the teacher's guide, you have some worksheet drills that go along with certain lessons. And it just tells you when you're going to use um, the drill page. It's just to reinforce the learning. So lesson 96, you do um, drill one and two here, and then um, three and four. It just tells you when to use it during that lesson. And then it also has, of course, the, um, the answer key in the back for the teacher. key. Now I purchased this specific um, teacher's guide from um, eBay I believe and so some of these um, pages were already filled in. Some of the pages that you're supposed to copy. So I really recommend getting the um, I believe it's like ten dollars or so. I see somebody had already filled this out so we weren't able to use, um, use these pages. But um, you can get, for $10, all of these worksheets already printed for you um, and sent to you uh, if you decide to um, buy, uh, buy them. That way you don't have to worry about wasting your own ink and printing them out or, um, you know, stuff like that. I, I find it's very useful. We didn't really use many of the worksheets for the reason that they were... Um, they were already written in, but also we were getting a lot of other practice um, using Saxton. So the teacher's guide is pretty simple. Um, there's not much to it. So, for example, like I just showed you um, a lesson, uh, lesson 72 here, same thing. There's about two pages, and then there's the worksheets that the student does. And that's it. <laughs> Then you're on to lesson 73 the following day. I love that there's not a lot of um, talking throughout here. I'll show you in, Sax in Saxton Math in a minute. There's a lot of information that I feel like it's super teacher intensive with Saxton compared to Horizons. Horizons is very, um, of course you have to teach, but it's it's very simple to explain to the students and then they learn doing their hands-on activity um, and I find that just really works for us all right so that was Sa um, horizons math one we really really love this program okay so for Saxton so Saxton like I said also is a spiral um, approach and um, so basically with Spiral, um, I probably just said this already, but I forgot. Um, so everything is taught um, once and then it, it just basically spirals. So each time that you learn a new concept, you're going deeper and deeper into the concept and you're learning a little bit more about it. I feel like Saxton does that, but very slowly um, in the sense that they don't introduce new concepts at the speed that Horizon introduces them, but I feel like there's a lot more um, mastery. I don't know if that makes sense, but they, they do things for a lot longer and it just felt like mastery to us, um, but it is spiral. So with Saxton, you have five components to this program. So you have the meeting, and this is the meeting book here. Um, along with every single lesson you do, um, the meeting book um, is a part of it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So there's five components. The meeting book, the lesson, which the teacher teaches, um, and then there's the written practice. Um, so like whatever worksheets you have to do, which basically it's two-sided um, worksheet, front and back. Um, then you also do some drills. And then, um, so that's like fact practice and things like that. And then you have assessments. So it's really like five components to complete each lesson here. Not every time do you have an assessment, but um, there's just a lot to it. So every day you start with the meeting book and this is what the meeting book consists of. So when I open to the teacher's guide, you'll see that the, every lesson will talk about this meeting book. So it's basically a calendar, some weather, 
So this is a chart where you chart the weather. And then sometimes they have, um, not on every one of these, but they have like a little um, illustrate and write. And after a while, we just kind of gave up on the weather. It was just a little bit too much. We try to do the calendar every month. And if we didn't do it every day, we at least visited it once a month and we filled out the calendar and, and talked about the calendar concepts. So we did this, um, I think until March, just about March. And we went all the way to lesson 102 in Saxton. Um, so we got quite a bit into the program. Um, there's only 180 lessons. Um, is it 180 lessons or 160? I think there's 160 lessons. I'll have to double check. Um, so yeah, we didn't even do April. So the back of the book here, they practice right and left. And then there's this number chart that they're um, theoretically supposed to fill out every day. Every lesson they practice writing a certain number. Um, this too got to be too much and my daughter just decided one day she'd fill out the whole thing. Um, because she just didn't want to deal with having to do this every single day. Um, so it goes all the way to 136, the number chart. And um, also a part of this is something called a, um, a meeting strip, which is basically a piece of paper. And I'll see if I can find it. I don't know what I did with it. It's basically a piece of paper that has the date um, to be filled in by the child and um, it has a section to put in um, a section to put in a pattern like a number pattern or a letter um, not a letter pattern but a shape pattern and I don't know where it is um, so the child fills that out every day and then there's a coin cup section so when we're learning money um, they can do that every day all right, so here's the student workbook. Love you, bud. Um, one we're all done with. So that was one. So here, as you can see. Um, so we left off in uh, 102, lesson 102. So this is an example of the front. So at lesson 102, we're still just learning how to write uh, number 93. Okay, so that's the number chart I was talking about. And then there's a front and back to this. So the way they want you to do it is you do the part A with the child and then later in the day the child is supposed to do part B by themselves. This became an issue because um, it just felt like math was dragging on a lot of the day and we just had other subjects we really enjoyed and wanted um, to give attention to and I felt like math was just looming constantly throughout our day. So my daughter just decided she wanted to do um, A and B. She, I would do A with her. She would just do B by herself right after A. So I'll just flip through um, a lesson here. All right, so here's um, an example of lesson 36. The gray box is where um, it just explains everything that the teacher is going to be teaching them, um, the concepts, material they need. Um, and then goes right down to the meeting calendar. You're gonna ask the child about the year, the date, shapes on the calendar. They have to write the date, uh, talk about the days of the week, do the weather graph, count, number pattern, clock, and then coin cup left and right, um, and then the lesson. There we go. This is all the lesson. As you can see, there's a lot more to this than Horizons has, um, and this is just a lot. And then the A and B that the student does for a worksheet. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip to the last lesson we did. So last lesson was 102. I just wanna show you that it just hasn't changed throughout. Um, that could be a good and a bad thing for some people. For us, it just didn't work, it was too monotonous. So at lesson 102, you're still doing this meeting, okay? Um, and I totally understand that repetition reinforces the learning, but you have to just kind of question how much is too much of the repetition. And every child is different, and um, 
it just got boring to the point where um, she didn't want to do it at this point. So we decided we were done. So it goes on to weather, accounting, number pattern, clock again, coin cup. My favorite part of Saxton is the um, the coin cup. I enjoyed um, teaching about money. And even though to this point, to lesson 102, they've only introduced pennies, nickels, and dimes for money. Um, I would, add, because she picked up on it from Horizons, um, Horizons introduces money um, much quicker. Um, I would add additional money to her coin cup and we'd continue learning about money in that way. So I like the coin cup system that they have. Um, so we just continue to do it. But like I said, we just weren't, we would be still stuck um, on pennies, nickels, and dimes here. Whereas um, Horizons is already going into dollars and such. So you have here like a little activity where um, you're teaching the child um, about um, shapes. Um, and here they have to cut a piece of paper into a, a curve. Um, and then find the middle and cut it in into a cone, um, like a sphere shape. So you do that little activity. Um, the other thing I wish that they would have done with Saxton is um, for activities like this, I wish that they were optional or at the end of the lesson because I feel like it takes on a life of its own when you have to do some sort of like, not that this is a craft, but for the kids it's like a craft. They wanna go on and do more of it and then they want to elaborate on it or color or something like that so it can extend the math lesson quite a bit um, if like if my kids they just, they just wanted to extend it and continue on going and then by the time we got here to the class practice and written practice they were kind of just like done they didn't want to continue on well my uh, one of my daughters didn't want to continue on okay so that's that um, so it just goes on and on like this. Um, and let's see how many lessons. So 130 lessons are in here. And we did 102. Um, gave it a fair shot. Just won't be using it again. Um, it's, it's too much. There's just way too much, um, of the same information in it. Um, and the pace is just very slow and it's just didn't it just didn't work for us I did give it I I believe a really fair shot <laughs> um, and I wanted to like it but it was just too boring too black and white too dry so uh, for us horizons is a clear winner we're gonna continue on with horizons um, I didn't have too much to say about horizons only because there's not too much to say. It's it is what it is. It's a really good math program. It's simple. Um, it's very straight to the point, and um, we love it. All right. Well, I hope this helped someone out there. Um, I wish I could have compared these sooner. I probably wouldn't have purchased both I these programs. So hopefully, this saves someone out there from having to purchase both of these. Um, thank you for watching and stay tuned to um, this channel because I'll be putting out some more end of year school videos. Thanks.